Hey guys, Vlog Chef here. Welcome back. For those of you who haven't been here before, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. For all of you who have been here before and who haven't been here before, go ahead and share this video to your Facebook page, your Instagram page, your MySpace, your Zanga, your Twitter, all those social media outlets out there. Let's get the word out. Vlog Chef is here to stay. Tonight, I've got something on my mind. That something is the fact that it's been a while since I've seen someone carrying a steel frame pistol. Everybody's got the new Glock. Everybody's got the new CZ. Everybody's got the newest polymer framed wonder gun. Why doesn't anyone carry a stainless steel or a metal frame pistol anymore? These are great guns. These are reliable guns. These are solid, dependable guns. So where have they gone? I like to think that they're in the safes of collectors and shooters across the country. That people are pulling them out every time they go to the range and they're shooting them and they're enjoying them. Heck, it's been a while since I've even seen a 1911 in somebody's holster. And those are guns that have withstood the test of time. Everybody's picking up these new polymer frame guns. And they're great. They're wonderful guns. But where is the love? Where is the dedication to these old, heavy, reliable, recoil-taming pistols? When's the last time that each one of you has picked up a Beretta M9 or a 92 and taken it to the range and shot it? When's the last time you've rented a 6-hour P226? Or heck, when's the last time you took one out of your gun collection to go shoot? I bet a lot of you probably have been a while. And there's no reason for it, folks. These older guns, some are still in manufacture today because they're great, reliable guns. Some militaries and police forces are still using these guns. But the polymer frame pistol prevails. It's been quite a while since I've seen stainless steel pistols moving brand new on a store shelf. Most of the time you see them in the used gun case. Heck, even 6-hour P226 can be picked up for five, 600 bucks these days used. And that's a great price. 10, 15 years ago, people would have been snapping them up for that price, but now they just sit on gun store shelves. Old Gen 3 Smith & Wessons from the 1990s. And I hate to even say old because that makes me feel old. These guns are going for $300. And... It's not because they're bad guns. It's because they're older. They've fallen out of favor. There's not so many people using them anymore. And there's a crap ton of them on the market, on the used market. A lot of them are police trade-ins. A lot of them have a lot of holster wear on them. That's not a bad thing, folks. We're not looking for guns to put in a display case and show off. At least most of us aren't. A little bit of holster wear never hurt anything. In fact, if I'm going to buy a gun to carry or a gun to shoot, I prefer one that's got a little bit of holster wear on it. It tells me that the person who owned it actually loved it enough to take it out of the safe every once in a while. Yeah, I've got a Barrett M9 that I bought brand new, and it's got no marks on it. And that's fine. But I've got a Sig P226 that looks like the finish wore off 10 years ago. And I love that gun just as much. It shoots just as well as a brand new 226. It's comfortable to carry, it's comfortable to hold, it's comfortable to shoot, and it soaks up recoil. So why aren't these guns in people's holsters anymore? Have we lost our appreciation for what came beforehand? For what our fathers and our grandfathers carried in their holsters? Heck, back in the 80s, you couldn't find somebody who was carrying a Glock. It was all 1911s and Smith & Wesson Gen 3s. Those were great guns. They were reliable guns. I realized that modern times call for a modern solution. And I realized that these stainless steel guns are heavy and they're uncomfortable for some people. Heck, my EDC is a Glock 26. That being said, my SIG P226 still goes with me on weekends. My M9 Beretta goes with me on weekends. You know, my revolvers still get pulled out of the gun safe and carried on weekends. Heck, one of my favorite guns is an old Bulgarian Makarov. You don't see anybody carrying those around anymore. Those used to be the popular pocket pistol, but they've been replaced by new polymer guns. You know, you don't 
you don't see the conformity to tradition in the gun world like you do in some other worlds. Yeah, I understand. There's always going to be people who are carrying these old guns. There's always going to be the 1911 nuts. There's always going to be the Sig Sauer guys. They're always going to be there. But they're getting to be few and far between. Even fewer and farther between are the guys that carry a full-size revolver. What happened to strapping on a 4-inch 357 Magnum to head out for a night on the town? That's still a great platform. It's still a good self-defense platform as long as you train with it and you know how to use it. Yeah, I understand that speed loaders take a little bit more time to practice with than a magazine does. But at the same time, you're also getting a platform that has double strike capability. You're getting a platform that is known for reliability. And you're getting a platform that has had several hundred years of development behind it. These guns have withstood the test of time. These guns have multiple advantages over modern striker-fired pistols. For example, the double-action, single-action trigger. That trigger is great. It's a lot harder to pull, say your shirt gets snagged in your holster. It can be cocked into the single-action position to take a more accurate shot. And in fact, in most semi-autos that are double-action, single-action all or, or excuse me, double action, single action, your first shot's always double action, your second shot's always single action. So you're always going to have reliable follow-up shots. A revolver, double action, single action. Every shot's going to be double action, but you can cock the hammer to take a more precise shot. It's a safe, reliable way to carry a gun. You don't need trigger safeties with double action, single action guns. You don't need three and four internal safeties with these guns. Why? Because they've got that long trigger pull that you're going to notice as your shirt catches it when you put it into your holster. It's a gun that you're going to know is there. When's the last time you saw a U.S. Marshal leave a Beretta M9 or a Sig Sauer in a bathroom? It's been a while. But you know what? A little while ago, Secret Service was leaving their Glocks laying around. You know, local police departments have left their Glocks laying around. Every federal agency that starts with an alphabetical letter has left their Glocks lying around. You don't have that with a heavy Sig Sauer. You don't have that with a heavy Gen 3 Smith & Wesson. It just doesn't happen. You notice the weight's gone. It used to be said that a, carrying a gun is not supposed to be comfortable. It's supposed to be comforting. The weight of that pistol on your hip was supposed to remind you of the responsibility that you had chosen to carry a gun. It used to remind you of the power that was on your hip. The lack of having to worry about your safety. The lack of having to worry about somebody coming up and jumping you and having something you don't. You've got your gun. You've got your safety net. You've got something that you've trained with, that you're proficient with, and that you can rely upon to defend yourself. The weight of these old semi-autos and the weight of these revolvers, it's not meant to be a hindrance, folks. It's meant to be a reassurance. But Glocks are lighter and more comfortable to carry. I get it. You know, the new P320. It's lighter. It's reliable. It's got 17 rounds of magazine capacity. I get it. They're great guns. All I'm saying is that we need to take a look back at these $300 Gen 3 Smith & Wessons. We need to take a look back at our steel frame 1911s, at our 92s, you know, our Beretta 85s, you know, the, 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 the great steel frame semi-autos of the world, the great revolvers of the world. Smith & Wesson, Ruger & Colt used to be the three biggest names in the world because of their revolvers, because of the triggers on them. People didn't buy these guns just to put into a safe. They bought them to shoot them. And the fact that so many trigger modifications and so many people took pride in their triggers and would show off, look how smooth the trigger on my revolver is. It was a testament to the design of these weapons. Revolvers. I haven't seen a bad looking old school revolver yet. I haven't seen a bad looking steel frame semi-automatic yet. I sure have seen some ugly polymer frame guns. I'm not going to mention any names though. And then, you've got your guns that just kind of fell by the wayside. You know, you've got the Makarovs, the Tokarovs. Obviously, 
carrying those is a little bit impractical. But when's the last time you saw a Tokarov in a gun shop? When's the last time that you went over to a buddy's house and he had one of these old Soviet block pistols that he showed off? One of my little favorite carry guns is my Makarov. I have a little Bulgarian Makarov. I throw it in my pocket. It works. You know, it's a double action, single action pull. It makes me feel like a spy. You know, hey, that's great. It's cool. You know, and then you've got these police trade-in guns. These old 5906s, the cheap specials, you know, the old SIGs that are maybe some federal trade-ins. You can buy these guns, I mean, for pennies on the dollar all day long. And these are guns that have stories behind them. These are guns that have legends behind them. You know, one of my one of my favorite guns that I bought and then I sold and I regret selling it. I had a, a Smith and Wesson. I believe it was a Model 65. It was a stainless steel gun. It had the Marion County Sheriff star right there on the side. That was Marion County Sheriff Indiana, which was even better because that's where I'm from. You know, I've got friends and family who are on the Marion County Sheriff's Office. I, I, I wish I had never gotten rid of that gun. I got excited because I wanted the new, I, I wanted the, the, the Sig Sauer 556 patrol rifle. I, I traded it in on it. I got rid of that rifle less than a month later. But I wish I still had that revolver. Some of the pieces that I regret getting rid of most have been my stainless steel guns, have been my metal frame guns. I had a Smith & Wesson 629 4-inch. I missed that gun. I had a Gen 3 Smith & Wesson, I believe it was a Model 4505. I regret getting rid of that gun. You know, I had a Rock Island 1911. I had a Sig Sauer Tac Ops 1911. These are both metal frame guns. I've lost, I've lost them to trades and sales over the years. I regret getting rid of them. You know, I've bought and sold and traded Glock Model 20s. I've bought and sold, you know, 17s, 19s, 26s. I've bought, sold, and traded those. I haven't missed one of them. You know, I can go buy another one. But the guns that I miss the most are my steel, metal-framed guns. Because they're hard to find in good condition. They're hard to find one that speaks to you. So, my recommendation for those of you who are shooters and those of you who are really into guns. Next time you're at the gun shop and you've got an extra 400 bucks in your pocket, go look at the used counter. Pick yourself up a nice Smith & Wesson revolver. Treat yourself to a nice Gen 3 Smith & Wesson semi-auto. Maybe spend a little extra money. Treat yourself to a nice 6 hour P226. Or maybe a used Beretta M9. Your wallet will thank you because you got it at a good price. Your hands will thank you. Your wrists will thank you because they're low recoil. And most importantly, you can't put a price that's going to be on the smile on your face. These old guns are beauties, folks. They're great shooters. They're great carriers. They're dependable, they're reliable, and most importantly, they match your personality when just like Mr. Murtaugh from Lethal Weapon says, I'm too old for this stuff. Gotta keep it PG, folks. Can't swear. That's all I've got for this evening. Those are my thoughts. I love me some stainless steel semi-autos. I love me some revolvers. So... I'm going to sign off now. Don't forget, share this on all your social media. Let's get this out as far as we can. Maybe if we hit 100 subscribers here in the next couple weeks, we can do some kind of a giveaway or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But for right now, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell for notifications for new videos. This is Glock Chef signing off. Have a good night and a wonderful summer.